Fun fact, did you know that not all gigabit internet packages are the same across the board? Let me explain. What you're looking at right now is Rogers Gigabit Internet offered in Ontario, Canada. For the most part, it's pretty good until it was time for me to upload massive project files. This is fairly clear. That is frustrating. Now let's do the same test, but this time we're going to make use of Bell's Gigabit service. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Before I even get started, super quick disclaimer, all the services that I am reviewing in this video, I paid for in full price. While I did have communication with some executive level people at both companies, this review is not indicative of their opinions and their views, nor have they had a chance to review this video before my posting it. So what you're getting is strictly my opinion. And if it wasn't completely obvious before, I'm not being sponsored to make this review. If we're being honest, I probably wouldn't have been sponsored anyway. It's only my second video on YouTube, so who's really sponsoring me at this point? But we could change that. All you have to do is hit that subscribe button. It's, it's right there. Just right there. Hit it. Help me out. Internet providers in Ontario. Let's talk about them. There are two major companies providing high-speed internet. In one corner, we have Rogers providing a cable internet service. They've been around since 1995, and they are noted to be the first cable internet provider in North America. Very reputable company. In the other corner, we have Bell providing multiple flavors of high-speed internet, also a very reputable company. Let's just agree ahead of time that there's gonna be a lot of people who have quite a few negative things to say about both of these companies, either in terms of quality of service that they've received or customer service issues that they've had. Let's just get that out of our system now and move on. Bell offers their service in two variants, really dependent on where you're located at the time of recording this video, of course. So they offer a RJ11 copper service. That is what the majority of households have as of right now. That's delivered through a RJ11 copper cable, which is very reminiscent of those older telephone style cables that you would see in home landlines. And then they offer fiber to the home, which is available through a GPON cable or gigabit passive optical network cable, GPON. Rogers offers their gigabit service through a copper coaxial cable. And at the time of recording this video, they seemingly offer more of the province in terms of availability of its gigabit service. However, having watched the beginning of this video, you may have noticed that that may not necessarily equate to it just being better, just because they have a wider availability map. But that's not to say that Bell doesn't offer good service using its copper cabling. At the time of recording this video, they do offer the majority of their customers DSL service through their copper cabling, but they're working quickly to rectify that by rolling out fiber to the home in as many communities as they possibly can through the use of fiber optic cabling. But let's face it, you're here for the speed tests. Roll it. Now, both networks are very capable. Don't get it twisted. Rogers has been exhausting their coaxial cable technology using their implementation of DOCSIS, which is just their protocol for sending high-speed internet through a 30 to 40-year-old technology. In Bell's case, they stuck with copper for a bit longer and just decided not to offer gigabit at the time because they probably just figured it wouldn't be as reliable. However, as the growing demand of high-speed data started to increase rapidly, upgrades were made by both companies. Both Rogers and Bell implemented what is known as fiber backbones. What these typically are is, think of it like 
from the main server for either Rogers or Bell, depending on who you were getting internet from, they would use fiber optic cabling to get from their server to your neighborhood. However, from where that fiber would end, say it was down the street from your house, they would use copper cabling to get from that area into your home, thus negating the need to do any major upgrades on the streets and any major upgrades in your house or on your property. And with that, more speed tests. So I keep showing you these speed tests using fiber optic internet, but if you're coming from copper, why would you even care to upgrade? Well, let me tell you a story. I had Rogers gigabit internet and it was good, except periodically through the day, I would lose my ability to upload. My download would work somewhat and I would get full speed when it did work. But for those who know about the internet, you can't really use the internet for downloading if you don't have any upload. This impeded my ability to use the internet for work. And I had to upload a lot of data for work. So it turned out I had a neighbor who was doing renovations on their house. They were like three, four houses down. And what ended up happening was every time he turned on a power saw, the interference from the power saw was knocking out my internet connection, which is absolutely incredible to think about. And therein lies the problem with copper cabling. See, 99% of the cables that we use are copper cables and they are susceptible to interference, but it's not like if I turn on my laptop, suddenly my hot tub's going to stop working. I, I, I need a hot tub to test this. So, those don't use the kind of frequencies that, say, an internet connection would. The faster the internet service, the higher the frequency you need to be able to access over copper cables. Unfortunately, if I had gone to a lower tiered internet plan, I probably wouldn't have noticed it as drastically. So my work required that I send my projects at a fairly fast speed. So unfortunately, this just wasn't an option. The interference from my neighbor's power tools wasn't entirely the issue. The issue was that the copper cabling was broken in several places. And sure, yeah, they could have came out and fixed it, which eventually they did. But that meant digging underground and then they fix it, which takes a period of time. But then what happens when it breaks again? Or what happens if another part of the cable is about to break and then it breaks your back to square one and so on? Clearly, coaxial cable became inferior. Now roll that sweet, sweet speed test. Mm, mm, mm. You lose. <laughs> when I moved to a new property in Ontario in 2019, I noticed two things. The first thing was that the upload speed just wasn't there and there was nothing I could do about it because that was a limitation of what Rogers offers. The second thing I noticed is that the internet, while it was more stable, there was clearly a broken cable somewhere because every time it rained really heavy or it snowed, my internet would get really, really flaky. However, even if they fixed it, again, it was probably going to break again. And ultimately, the upload speed became the crutch. And because Rogers cable doesn't offer a faster upload speed than at the time of recording this 30 megabit. I think my relationship with cable internet in this province, in this country has become sour. Now enter Bell 5. They offer their gigabit tier internet service only through their fiber to the home deployment. But there's something that Bell offers that Rogers strictly just can't compete with at the time of recording this video. Their technology is just extremely limited. More on what that is later on. If you look at Rogers and Bell, their pricing is pretty much the same. However, take note of the upload speed on Bell service and the emission of the upload speed on Rogers Ignite internet. Upon expanding the finer print, you'll see immediately that they can only offer 30 megabit upload in their service. Earlier in the video, I mentioned types of cable and Rogers widely available is this copper gigabit service, but it does have some limitations. See, Bell is rolling out their optical cable or GPON gigabit 
passive optical network cable. And the thing with copper cable is that there's some limitations that you just can't get past that this g cable seemingly can blow right past all the copper stuff. The key word there being optical. It's not as susceptible to interference as the old copper cables were. See, g uses lasers. A laser. Also, with g cable, there really isn't a theoretical speed limit. They're breaking records for this stuff in labs all the time, so we don't really know how fast these cables can go to provide you internet. But if lab tests are anything to go by, we're looking at a very, very fast internet in the future. I just want to make a quick note that if you're finding that your internet service that you have at home is a little slower, you might want to consider picking up a separate wireless router. And the reason I say this is because these um, gateway modem router combinations that these internet providers give you, they're not exactly conducive to giving you the optimal speed and performance that you're essentially paying for. Here at the house, I'm using an Asus AX89X, which is super overkill for most people. And frankly, the thing looks like a spider. I'll be reviewing this router on the channel, so make sure you're subscribed and you can see that video when it comes out. There are affiliate links to pick up the router if you're so interested in the description of this video. So if you decide you wanna pick up one of those, hit the link in the description, it helps the channel out a ton. Okay, so you're deciding on internet between Rogers and Bell in Ontario, Canada, and your decision's coming down to games. I mean, that's a very important part of the internet. So. I got my Xbox One X controller here, and I've got Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered in my Xbox. We're gonna play some games. We're gonna compare the two services. The results might surprise you, and I'll give you a hint. This is why it's almost perfect internet from Bell, but enough talking, let's play some games. So unlike copper connections, fiber to the home is a direct fiber optic connection to the internet provider, in this case, Bell. And during gameplay, the lag is very, very low. The way I like to gauge lag in gaming is to check the kill cam. If I fired my gun and still got killed, I would check the kill cam to see whether or not it registered my weapon firing. So looking at Bell, clearly I didn't aim well and deserved to lose that battle. Let's look at Rogers. Yeah, I definitely fired more than the kill cam registered. To be honest, when I'm in a game, it's an unfair advantage against those who aren't on fiber to the home and probably have a higher skill level than I do. Mainly, I'm just a casual player. But there's a glaring downfall that Bell needs to address. Let's take a look. Isn't fiber to the home the be all end all internet connection? Technically, yes, it is in 2021. However, Bell needs to address a major issue with their service. Xbox One is optimized for IPv6. We're using the exact same Xbox One X with a solid state hard drive connected with Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered installed on it. So we're loading the same map here. Without going down the wormhole too deep, Bell hasn't yet supported IPv6 and has chosen to stick with IPv4. The shortcomings of this are very long, but to sum up what I believe is being experienced here, IPv4 is basically your run-of-the-mill IP addresses, your 192.168, etc. addresses, if you will. By 2019, many regional internet registries have announced that they have run out of IPv4 addresses. Well, Rogers has already loaded, while Bell looks like it's stuck. Furthermore, with IPv4, it has to go through your router and perform network address translation, or NAT, to get to the internet. IPv6, on the other hand, directly connects to your gaming console, negating the extra step, which should result in less lag. This, plus the many services and internet providers moving to support IPv6, introduces a lot of benefits for you, the end user. If Microsoft's Xbox Live service is pushing IPv6 and encouraging users to connect to it, this means those who cannot connect to IPv6 will lose out on a lot of what Xbox Live and the internet as a whole have to offer. And finally, Bell connects just over 30 seconds into the match. TLDR for gaming, IPv4 means less lobbies, worse connection issues, and inferior options to play online. I mean, look at what happened here. And this was on a Saturday night around midnight Eastern Standard Time. It can't be this hard to get into a lobby, right?
IPv4 is predicted to be end of life by 2040, which is still a long way off, but the superior connection technology IPv6 offers clearly has a ton of benefits. If you want to learn more and dive deeper into IPv4 versus IPv6, Linus from Linus Tech Tips did a fantastic video on his Tech Quickie channel, which I'll link below in the description. If Bell offered IPv6, this would essentially be, at least in my eyes, the perfect internet connection. As a content creator for YouTube, among other professions, I'll explain those other professions in another video on the channel soon, time becomes money. In the fast-paced industries I work in, it demands I hit certain deadlines and abide by timelines. As content grows bigger in size, Rogers just wasn't able to keep up with my specific needs, and that was even on their highest tiered package. Okay, so let's go back to the very beginning of this video. Remember when I showed it would take an hour to upload a 21 gig video, and then the second part that would take five minutes? Look carefully at that video. That wasn't a 21 gig video I was trying to upload in the second part. That was two 21 gig videos I was trying to upload in the second part. In other words, while 21 gigabytes would take an hour on Rogers, two 21 gig videos would take five minutes on Bell Fiber to the Home. I also mentioned that there's something with Bell that Rogers can't compete with. Let's go back to that comparison of their internet plans for a second. You'll notice that the download speeds are priced the same, but Bell, because they offer a superior technology, can offer what's known as a symmetrical connection. They can provide the same upload and download speed. And what's not noted is that you can do this at the same time time. One of the biggest downsides I faced using Rogers when I had Rogers is that I could upload all my work, but good luck using the internet while I was uploading my work. 21 gigs, that's an hour. Want to watch Netflix? Good luck with that. More like no flicks. I mean, you'd be able to check your email, but I feel like as a society, when you're waiting an hour, there's a lot more you typically want to do with your internet connection in the hour you're waiting for your work to finish. So even if I pushed a ton of data through my upload using Bell Fiber to the home, it's imperceptible to me while I'm waiting for that stuff to upload to use my internet. It's almost like nothing has changed. And if the price is the same, this is a no brainer. The other downside to Bell and as of late, even Rogers, deploying fiber to the home is not easy and it's not available everywhere. It takes a lot of super hardworking people. That being said, if your area was recently upgraded or you're moving into a new property that was recently built, there's a very high likelihood that fiber to the home is available. Now, if you have the option to get Bell Fiber to the home versus Rogers Cable, this is a no-brainer. Pick up Bell Fiber to the home. But that doesn't mean that Rogers isn't trying to play catch up. At the time of recording this video, a recent report came out that Rogers is expanding and deploying fiber to the home starting in Ottawa. Competition is great for us consumers. And hey, if these companies are going to work this hard to try to win our business, I'm all for it because that just helps all of us. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you want to see more content like this. If you like the video, hit that like button. If you got something to say about this video, throw a comment down below. My name is Sean. This has been Tech Mixer. I'm out.